<laughs> so how do we make this? It's very, very simple. So we get the grains in here. They're having fun in this packet, but they want to come out. There we go. And then what we do is I've pre-measured 250 mils of milk. Just regu regular milk, regular milk, it's just room temperature. Sorry, it's out of the fridge, out of the fridge, so refrigerated milk. And then full cream, full cream. I really recommend in terms of milk sources, A2. So an A2 protein is a nice, soft, easy to digest protein. Jersey milk is good, so A2 is the brand. Jersey is just the cow. They both produce A2 milk. It's just the type of casein in the milk. Very, very easy to digest. What about the organic milk that's on the shelves now? You sit the markets around. Farmhouse. Farmhouse. My, my suggestion is you, you send a, uh, like a query to the company and just ask them, is it A2? Yeah. Or is it Jersey cows? Yeah. And have you got a corn leaf pasteurized or homogenized? That's an interesting question. Yeah. I think. And raw? I think, well, r raw milk is now not an option mm -hmm. because they add quinone, which is a is a bittering compound to the milk. So really in Victoria, we can't get a hold of it. We used to, we used to get bath milk, but now you'll notice if you buy the bath milk and try and drink it, it'll be really bitter. So it's not really an option. Pasteurized is really the only option we have. You can get raw goat's milk if you're lucky. I don't think there's legislation around that. So raw, raw goat's milk is an option. I can get raw goat's, so you would have- Raw goat's is fine, yep, yep. It's, it's perfectly fine if you get a good source, it's, cl it's clean and all that kind of business. Well, now all these organic milks, these farmhouse milks, these other brands coming out, what I suggest is actually ask the company. Because I, I don't really know whether it's going to be an A2 casein in there. Okay. So it might well be. The, the, or you can go into the website and just look at the herds. Look at the herds, just make sure it's all Jersey. Yeah. Yeah, that's, that's a clarification. Okay. Yeah. Ex excellent question, excellent question. Can you use other sources of milk, like a, uh, like a nut-based milk, like coconut milk, almond milk? You absolutely can. You can use these grains here. The only thing is the grains won't grow. Because to, to grow, to produce that exopolysaccharide, the house, the grain needs lactose. And you can only get lactose from dairy milk. So that's the only thing. But you still will produce perfectly good kefir from almond milk, coconut milk, perfectly fine. What you could do, interesting strategy that lots of people use, is you alternate. You can go, you know, start with dairy milk, then alternate to almond milk, then back to dairy, try cashew, whatever you want to try. So if, if you have a, sorry. Yep. It's, some will very clearly brand it. It'll say, it'll say like Jersey milk. Or others will, like, I think A2 now, the A2 brand is trademarked A2. Yeah. So no one can really use A2. So only they can use the marketing A2. But the, uh, there's still other companies that do Jersey milk. You just have to work out from their marketing information, from the packaging, asking the company whether it's actually a Jersey cow. Because they're far more easier to digest than A1. A1 milks are typically more inflammatory harder to digest, creates more issues. Is that cool? Yeah, cool. Great. So yeah, so you basically you leave this. I recommend leaving the lid on slightly open. And some, some people will keep it closed. It's purely up to you. The only reason why I say leave it slightly open is because it limits alcohol production. So I want to make sure it keep, I keep it low for my customers with children, people who are sensitive to alcohol. If you keep it closed, you get a slightly higher probiotic level. Because when you're keeping it closed, you favor lactobacilli, who are mainly anaerobic. They don't like oxygen. So that's the two strategies you can employ. 